Samira, thank you for your time here on the Leaders of Tomorrow. Good having you joining us to talk directly to our viewers about the top events which are impacting the life of any small business as we see it. Uh, and I'm of course talking about first the pandemic and recovery really coming back but second also what we're seeing as far as the ripple effect that we're calling it here on the leaders of tomorrow of the ukraine russia war and it's a uh, good having you here joining us to talk about the bird's eye view as far as the fmcg space is concerned Samir. thanks ananda for having me on the show i think the role of uh, cfo has evolved over the last two years i think it, at the onset uh, of pandemic it was all about scenario building it was about cash preservation and then immediately to shift gears to growth um, because you no longer want to be beyond a point in time too much you know kind of preserving cash so the shift was from how do you preserve your cash to kind of get into growth mode and over the last six to eight months it has been all about how do you tackle the inflationary pressures yeah. the inflation has been i mean going on since last i would say nine to twelve months um and i don't know to hazard a guess in terms of where this will you know be over next months and quarters sure. but uh, the role over here is to ensure that uh, the price increases which is being passed on to the end consumers one a calibrated one sure um, consumers beyond a point cannot absorb the entire increase in input cost the other piece over here is to not panic because there could be a tendency to kind of really get into a panic mode when you see wild swings as we have been seeing actually 10 percentage okay. plus or 10 percentage minus in terms of some of the key a commodity basket but sure. a little bit more calmer in terms of what's happening have a point of view strategically in terms of sure. where some of this could be and then take your pricing action just give us your strategy in terms of how you manage your raw material cost because we are also coming off uh, you know perhaps the worst that we've seen uh, as far as you know any of us are concerned when it comes to the pandemic and i'm sure that businesses like yours faced some sort of uh, raw material and input cost pressure and constraints. So how did you really manage that period and your advice for managing any disruptions when it comes to raw material and managing input cost disruption? Sure. There are multiple strategies in India which one can follow. Uh, mm -hmm. Typically for some of the key uh, raw materials or uh, commodity linked raw materials, uh, one can have sourcing strategy. Uh, which can be either you kind of go long in terms of your purchases if your in-house view is that the prices over a period of time are going to move up or you remain extremely low in terms of your purchase or forward contracts on purchases if the view is that prices are going to come down so that's the first thing which uh, can be deployed the other is being very dynamic uh, and having a very deep rooted relationship with the vendors and that's very important because in times like this we can always go back to our vendors to kind of share i mean the pain right in terms of inflation so part can be shared by the business and part can be shared by the vendors the other thing which can also be factored in is how does one go even more you know severe in terms of cost saving programs now those cost saving programs can actually be either on raw materials packaging materials or even on so called fixed overheads which would be part of the business so in times like this it's also very important to be very uh, frugal in terms of cost and every cost which is not a consumer facing cost should be questioned and should be challenged in tough times like this so mm -hmm. that it helps in offsetting some of the inflationary pressure an uh, entrepreneur particularly in the in in the industry uh, that uh, you are in um, are you happy with the kind of innovation that you're seeing because you know we're talking about on one end entrepreneurs are being squeezed as far as the raw material price are concerned uh, and on the other end, things are still continuing to look a little uncertain, particularly for small businesses. So, are you happy with the kind of innovation? What's your own approach to innovation at GCPL that you could use as advice for our small businesses? Sure, no, innovation has been a lead growth driver for us and some of the metrics which are global metrics like innovation rate uh, for us over around uh, high teens to even 20 percentage, which is a great innovation rate uh, metric uh, to track. Mm -hmm. I mean, my advice to the entrepreneurs would be to continue being innovative because that's what will differentiate you. Eventually, the space is going to get crowded. So, you know, what will be your USP and what will be differentiation that can come from innovation. Now, if we spend some time in terms of how does one drive innovation, it actually starts with having a very deep consumer engagement and insight. 
Mm-hmm. Moment you understand what are consumers' behavior, you understand what are some of the unmet consumer needs, and if you are able to understand it very clearly, you will be able to have a thought process in terms of what product or service can be offered to that consumer, which is currently not getting offered.